Hi everyone, I'm Jess and I'm the content manager here at Course Report. Course Report is the resource for helping people find the right coding boot camps for them. If you haven't used Course Report yet, check it out. Um, you can research the best online and in-person coding boot camps all over the world, find out which coding languages to learn, where to apply, and how to fund your very own coding boot camp experience. Today, I am so happy to have Zachary Lynch, a boot camp instructor from Sabio, joining us to talk about how long it actually takes to learn JavaScript. Zach, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. We definitely want to dive into talking about JavaScript, but first, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. What's your role at Sabio and how are you supporting the students there? Hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks for having me. My name is Zach Lynch, and of course, I'm one of the instructors here at Sabio. Uh, I went through Sabio myself as a, as a veteran getting out of the military. So looking for things to do, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. All right. And then stumbled upon Sabio's program and found out there are some great, awesome benefits that I could utilize, uh, to get trained there. And I really had an interest in coding and I didn't know that I could just go code, um, outside of a college. Right. So I didn't find myself to be a college person. Um, so I went to the Sabio bootcamp and went through it, graduated, uh, learned a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff ended up becoming a full stack engineer for a company um, that did mortgage marketing and built them an application. And then uh, after some time came back to be an instructor here, all right? So now what I do is I help students uh, get, get started with their code, all right? By teaching them HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, and some other libraries available in JavaScript as well. Okay, so at a very high level, what is JavaScript? Sure. I level JavaScript. All right. It's a front end library that we use. All right. It's a front end language that we use to basically interact with web pages. All right. It's what allows users to interact. So when you click a button, everyone clicks a button on a website. All right. JavaScript is going to make that button do something. All right. It's going to run a function that allows a user to log in or log out or add a friend or whatever the case may be. All right. So JavaScript is just something that allows us to basically create um, effective and efficient applications for users to use. And that kind of links into my next question of what is JavaScript used for? It sounds like it's all over the web and applications. Sure, absolutely. JavaScript is used for exactly what I just said a moment ago, which was just basically allowing the user to interact with those web pages, all right? Making them interact. Um, mainly the things that we see on the web pages nowadays are, are all JavaScript, all right? Uh, for the most part, every time you click a button, all right, every time you view a profile, every time you go on your social media, every time you add funds to your bank on your mobile app, right, something of that nature, um, those are usually going to be ran through JavaScript, all right, which allows just users to interact with their uh, applications. So we often hear this question, like, how long does it actually take to learn JavaScript? So let's break down how long it takes folks to learn JavaScript in your own experience. All right, Zach, so let's run through sort of the three levels of JavaScript um, and how long it takes to learn them. If we start at the very beginning, how long does it usually take to learn the very basics of JavaScript? Sure, uh, we're gonna start right in on day one, all right, with learning the basic of, basics of JavaScript, right? And that includes a lot of stuff. Uh, defining variables would be the main thing, right? Defining variables, how to define variables. Variables are what allow us to basically store data inside of one item. All right, which can be an object or an array um, or some simple string content, text content, numbers, et cetera. All right, that we then put all over the web page, all right, to then access and render that data to the user. All right, so defining variables would be day one. Um, that's the main thing, as well as defining functions. All right, what are functions? Functions are pre written code snippets that allow the user to, uh, that allow some code to execute based off, um, for instance, a user generated event. Right, so defining functions is a very, very important thing. We don't want anything to happen for the user until the user makes that choice, right? So we don't want to log in the user or log out the user until the user clicks that login or log out button, right? When they click that login or log out button, that's when a function will run, all right, which will then take care of that process, all right? So user generated events are very important here. Um, objects and arrays, right? Objects and arrays are how we send and receive data from our database to our server to our front end. All right, so objects allow us to store a bunch of information inside of what's called properties inside of this object. All right, so for instance, what we might have as an object is a car. All right, that car has properties, you know, car paint, car color, uh, amount of seats, amount of wheels, et cetera. All right, so those kind of, uh, that kind of data is stored inside of these objects, which allow us to basically send and receive this data, right, at a more efficient um, manner. Okay, and then arrays are miscellaneous items. They're actually JavaScript objects as well. 
But what they allow us to do is store a bunch of data, all right, inside of these arrays by their array name. And what happens is that when I store that data inside this array, it's given an index position, all right? Then I use that index position to look up um, the piece of data stored by that number, all right? So this is all, a lot happens on day one, all right? But I'm here to walk you through it, and the instructors are here to walk you through it very slowly and make sure that you understand completely. Um, but there is going to be a ton of stuff that we learn in day one, all right? But the great thing is, is that day one, it feels like a lot, but come week three, all right, you're like, okay, I totally understand that now. All right, it's making a lot more sense to me. I know how to implement this. I know how to use this. I know how to define this and create this. Uh, so we make sure that we we take you through very slowly. And when we're talking about these amazing um, upcoming coding workshops that Sabio is going to be offering, can someone who's like a total tech beginner, like a total coding newbie come in and learn these things? So uh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. So what I would do uh, is I would join those those pro, uh, those free workshops that I have coming up. All right. And you don't need to have any coding experience whatsoever. I did not have any coding experience coming into this. Uh, I just knew there's something I was interested in, but only knew that colleges were how you learn these things. All right. Until I stumbled across Sabio. And then I was like, okay, well, let me try this out. Uh, and so you do, you do not need any experience whatsoever coming into coding. We're going to make sure that you have everything you need and hit the ground running. All right, and start on our first day with lectures. All right, and our second day is gonna be lectures, and our third day is lectures, and we're gonna be making sure that we're with you the entire way. So you have an instructor with you the entire time. You have access to the instructors throughout the day. Um, if you have get stuck or any questions, things like that. Um, so it's very important that you do not need to have any coding experience. All right, having coding experience may help you. All right, but we're gonna make sure that we get you there without it. So once someone has sort of the basics of JavaScript, the super fundamentals, um, and then they're looking to master JavaScript, um, can you let us know like how long that typically takes to get to like sort of that mastery level where you could actually land a job? Sure. Uh, so what we do here at Savio is we start you off on that, you know, from day one and forward by implementing a lot of libraries. All right. So we start out with our basic uh, basic JavaScript. And then we introduce you to a front end library called jQuery. All right, jQuery is basically uh, a library that allows us to manipulate and update the content on the page, all right, using their library. Okay, so just that alone can actually get you a job as a developer um, professionally. Um, now, come month three, what we're gonna be doing is, uh, or come month two even, is introducing you to more advanced JavaScript library, such as React. All right, React's probably the most popular library there is when it comes to JavaScript. Um, it was developed by Facebook, all right? And what it allows us to do, all right, is basically store a lot of information on what's called a virtual DOM. And that virtual DOM only updates when it finds a change on the page. So it basically becomes very, very efficient and reusable. Um, and once you get your feet into React, all right, it's going to be uh, probably about another month or two before you're feeling very, very comfortable with it. All right, there's a lot to learn with it. Um, but by the time you're done here at Sabio, you're going to have ton, a ton of um, experience and uh, be marketable for employment. That's so cool. So basically, three months at, for, at a boot camp like Sabio, you can get it to a mastery level and land um, some kind of software engineer, software developer role. So then once you're, let's say, in the workplace and you're looking to become sort of that JavaScript expert, how long does that take and what does that usually require? So that might take some time as well, but usually uh, to get mastery level, all right, you're always going to be honing in your talents, always going to be refining your, your code, all right? So it's going to be um, between three and six months maybe before you become at a mastery level, but you are going to be hireable, all right, before that. Because here's the thing, there's always a chance and opportunity to keep learning and, and uh, re-implementing your code, all right, and redefining your skills. So what's going to happen, all right, is you are hireable at month three, all right, with React, okay? And then you're going to take that forward and start implementing more JavaScript libraries, all right? You're going to learn more tools, more functions, more APIs to work with, all right? APIs are application interfaces that allow us to basically talk from one application to the other, all right? So if I wanted to drop a Google Maps uh, component in on my page, all right, well, I'm going to learn how to do these things. And at the minimum, what I'm going to have at my, in my tool shed, right, is the skill to figure out how to do it, all right, which is very important. Understanding how to research, how to implement that, and how to refactor your code, all right, is a main thing as well. 
So Zach, will these workshops give participants an accurate idea of what it's actually like to learn at Salvio? Absolutely. All right. So the workshops that we'll be conducting um, are going to be exactly what the lectures are like uh, with me or another instructor. All right. So we're going to sit down. We're going to type code with uh, type code in front of you. All right. And highly advise you follow along and code along with me. All right. Because that muscle memory, that fingers on the keyboard, that's going to make a huge difference for you later on. So just watching the videos is going to be one thing. All right. But when you're with me and with an instructor, all right, coding along with me, answering questions when you when you when you're stuck on something or you haven't written something correctly. We're going to go ahead and make sure that you have it correct before you move on, all right? So uh, the intro to coding courses that we're going to be doing soon all right, are exactly how they're going to be run for lectures when you're in the boot camp. And as someone who went to Sabio um, and graduated, do you recommend that any future incoming boot camp students understand the fundamentals of JavaScript before they enroll at Sabio? So uh, it would be a, a good idea to start getting into JavaScript a little bit, understanding the fundamentals. But if you don't have time for it, maybe your your life doesn't allow you to, to start studying before you join Savio. That's totally okay. I'm going to make sure and the other instructors are going to make sure that you understand the fundamentals and we're going to walk with you very slowly through the entire way. All right. So if you do, that's going to be a positive thing. All right. And there are plenty of uh, resources available to you to do that. All right. Such as the free coding courses coming up um, or any of the free courses that Savio offers. Right. So if you have an opportunity to get those done, that's a good thing. But if you don't, we're going to make sure you get there either way. Well, I think that's an excellent place to wrap up this discussion about JavaScript. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise on this today with us, Zach. Yeah. Um, and thanks so much to all of you for watching. We'll be posting a transcript of this video interview on the course report blog with contact information for Sabio, just in case you're interested in applying for either an upcoming cohort or any of their free coding workshops. And in the meantime, follow course report on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your coding bootcamp experience on course report. Your review is a huge help to anyone thinking of getting into tech today. Thank you.